Perth home values increased 7% in the first half of 2021, according to the latest CoreLogic figures. So let's get into the details with this month's Perth market update. G'day guys, my name's Tim Guest, and welcome to our market update video series where you can stay up to date with the markets that matter and find out what's happening in your local area. REBA President Damien Collins said, while the Perth Home Value Index for June had only increased 0.2%, the cumulative growth over the first six months of the year had been substantial. Now, Mr. Collins said, although the June price growth rate is the smallest we've experienced this year, it, is, uh, it has still been a positive year and brings the year-to-date total growth tally to 7%. Furthermore, in the last financial year, home values have increased 9.8% in Perth. Now, the smaller growth rate recorded in June is also not surprising given we'd entered the traditional winter slowdown. In fact, it's encouraging that even as the colder weather has descended upon us and activity has eased slightly, we're still seeing price growth. Now, this will hold Perth in good stead as we transition out of the winter and into the spring selling season in the coming months, Mr. Collins said. Now, Perth's median house sale price for June was $510,000, according to Rewa.com data. Mr. Collins said that whilst overall growth rate figures are important for understanding market trends, they don't tell you the whole story. It's very pleasing that when we drill down to suburb level, 84 suburbs recorded significant median house sale price growth during the month. Now, Rewa.com data shows the suburbs to record the biggest increases in median sales price growth during June were Parkwood up 4.8% to $450,000, Borogoon up 4.1% to $825,000, Merriwa up 3.9% to $335,000, Quinns Rock up 3.9% to $499,000, and June Lup up 3.2% to $525,500. Now other suburbs to perform well were Subiaco, Kalamunda, Tapping, Netherlands, and Wanneroo. Now, there were 8,933 properties listed for sale on Rewa.com at the end of June, which is 1% less than at the end of May. Mr. Collins said, we saw a small decline in listings at the end of June compared to May, but compared to three months ago, listings for sale have increased 8.1%. On an annual basis, stock levels remain 13.4% lower than they were at the end of June 2020. Now, it took a median of 15 days to sell a home in June, which is one day slower than it took in May. Mr. Collins said despite the minor increases in median selling times, the figure for June is still close to the lowest we had seen in the last 15 years. Reba.com data shows the suburbs to record the fastest median selling times in June were Kingsley, seven days, Wembley, Brabant, Craigie, Greenwood, Heathridge, Kinross, Palmyra, and Williton all eight days and Parkwood at nine days. Now, Mr. Collins said, while the Perth sales market slowed slightly in June, it is still performing well and competition amongst buyers remains high. Now, Rewa anticipates the Perth market recovery will continue throughout the second half of 2021 and into 2022. Perth's median rent price for June was $4.25 a week, which is five more than it was in May. Now, Mr. Collins said, Western Australia remains the most affordable place in the country to rent in. Now, despite the small increase uh, re recorded to the Perth median rent during the month, it's still $25 cheaper than it was in 2013 and 2014 when it peaked at 450 bucks a week. Now, it took a median of 19 days to lease a rental during June, which is one day slower than May 2021, but eight days faster than June 2020. The suburbs to record the fastest leasing times during June were Yanship, 11 days, Balga and Maddington, are both at 13 days, Inloy, 14 days, and Success also at 14 days. Now, other suburbs to perform well were Thornley, Wellard, Golden Bay, Beckenham, and Brabham. Now, there were 2,818 properties for rent at the end of June on Rewa.com, which is stable compared to last month and 5.7% higher than three months ago. Rewa.com data shows the suburbs to record the biggest growth in rental listings during the month were Shelley, Piara Waters, Cardinia, Hamilton Hill, Coolblop, Osborne Park, Dianella, Leadville, Nedlands, and Secret Harbour. Now, Mr. Collins said the listing figures for June are encouraging. While we are no means out of the woods, it is pleasing that stock levels have started to stabilise on a three-month basis and are improving. Now, the Perth vacancy rate is currently at 1%. We'd like to see that lift to around 2 to 3% to restore balance in the market with investor finance levels starting to rise. We should hopefully see more properties come to the market in the second half of the year. Finally, uh, it is imperative that remain, uh, investors remain an active part of the WA market. So Mr. Collins said there are enough rentals to keep up with the demand. So the outcomes of the Residential Tenancies Act review, which is currently underway, needs to be fair for all parties and ensure investors aren't disincentivized from buying in WA. Finally, with regards to the latest COVID-19 outbreak and subsequent lockdown, 
He said it's concerning, but as is the case in February and in April, there should be minimal short-term impact on the real estate market, provided Perth can get on top of this outbreak quickly. Well, guys, that's it from me today. Please remember to like, comment, and share this video, and remember to uh, f uh, subscribe uh, and follow uh, uh, wherever it is that you're seeing this. Have a great week, guys, and remember there's only one thing in life that makes a difference, and that's action. Thanks a lot, and bye for now.